All right, everybody, welcome back. We're working on um, creating our child theme, WordPress child theme. And I've added the, uh, the, the unit test documents, which creates this very, very large, filled website with lots of content. And I want to tackle the nav bar. Not only do I want to tackle the nav bar, but I'm going to start kind of a, a series in and of itself, of itself on mobile first complex nav bar. So what I want to do is I want to, first of all, we're going to add some bootstrap. Uh, we're going to add either tabs or pills. I want to show you how you can easily generate the base styles for, um, for bootstrap menu. I want to talk about very complex selectors because in order for us to uh, make the changes that we want and have a very fine-tuned control over this, we need to understand some advanced selectors, and we're going to take advantage of those. We're going to add animations. Not only that, but uh, we're going to add a, a mobile-first approach to how we do this. So there's a lot in this, and this is going to take a couple of video series, a couple of sessions to sort of get there. First thing we want to do is create this kind of bootstrap tab. And in order to do that, really, bootstrap is all about adding classes to the right locations. So one of the things you'll notice, if you want tabs, you need your unordered list to have a class of nav and nav tabs. If you want it to have the pill, the example here, it'll have to have nav space, nav pills. So either way, you need one of those sets of classes. I'll show you how to do both, and it's using the same general technique. In order to do that, we're going to use the, um, I'm going to go ahead and go in here and using web matrix. And uh, in order for us to, to sort of do this, uh, you need to have known how to set up a bootstrap, uh, the bootstrap setup. And so that's, there's previous tutorials on there that you can look at. Um, I'm assuming you already have bootstrap installed and ready to go. What we want to do is we want to look at the header.php and we want to scroll down to where we have our nav bar. So if you scroll in here, one of the things you're going to notice is our nav bar has a PHP WP nav menu function call in here with an argument. We call these arguments. Sometimes people call them parameters. And inside of the WP nav menu, you're going to see this thing called an array. Well, what we're doing here is we're, we're going to use the, the WordPress nav menu function, and we're going to customize it. You customize it through this array. So we're going to add um, some key value pairs is what they're called. This is called an associative array for those of you that um, are studying computer science or are uh, interested in knowing what we're calling this stuff. You want the official name. And we're going to send it a list of some, uh, basically these are kind of like variables and their values. So the theme location of this menu is primary. So whatever we set as a primary theme, is what will be placed in here. Now before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at the WP nav menu so that we know what we're talking about. Feel free, if you ever see a WordPress function call and you don't know what it is, copy it and paste it into a Google search engine or any other engine, search engine that is. Click on it and you can get some information. Now notice it says args, this means arguments or parameters. See, parameters, arguments, same terms. And here's a list of these. You can set the menu, what is the desired menu, menu class, menu ID, container. Okay, so we have a, a set of these. And the first thing you're going to see, well, menu class, it's CSS class to use for the UL element. So you would think, okay, this must be the right one. So we copy it. We go in here. And let's just go ahead and add that. We'll just put a single quote. Menu class, you do a little equal sign in an angle bracket, make sure it's going the right way. We'll put nav space nav dash uh, tabs, I think was one of them. And we're going to go ahead and save our changes and let's see if we can add it. Now, before we do that, I want to go to my test site here and we're going to take advantage of our developer tools. So, most browsers will have developer tools. If you're using a PC, just do an F12 and you've got it here. If you're using a Mac and you have Chrome, just go to their settings. Um, and I believe there's a setting on there or it's under view or something and you can find developer tools. So what we want to do is we want to like look at this nav, nav bar. And first thing you're going to notice is inside the nav with an ID of nav, 
we have a div with a class of menu. And we have an unordered list with no class at all. Okay? So unclassy. We go back here. You notice menu, class, nav, nav tabs. That should have worked. So I was doing a little digging. And I finally gave up on digging. And I tried something because I thought, well, maybe what we need to do is just trick it out and say container. Because if you notice here, the container's default is div. So I thought I'd just try this out. What if I set the container to be a UL? Sometimes educated guess might be all you need. Let's see if that works. And it does. So that's your trick to get if you want to add that particular class. So if you're trying to add a particular class to the UL, the only way to get that to seem to, the, the, the only way I can get that to work is by setting our container to be a UL. And there's no problem. If you wanted your unordered list inside of a div, well, you can just go add a div right here. Just like that, close it after the nav, and there you have your surrounding div if you want it. Now, I actually don't see the purpose for that. If you have a reason for it and you want it, Fine, just add it there. So I'm just going to go back. I'm going to leave it as it is. I already have my nav, so this one I can I can use it. So at this point, remember, that's in the header. If you need to pause it, get the code, go for it, do that now. And then I'm going to move on to the next step. Well, let's just go ahead and see how easy it is to make it a pill. Now, before I do this, if you look at the nav tabs and you go to the page, you'll notice there's this underline at the bottom down here, and that looks a little weird. Um, part of it's because this is a nested list, and so one of the things I recommend you try is nav pills instead. Save your changes, hit refresh, and now it's a little bit different, but notice what happens when I hover over it, and that, uh, that border at the bottom is gone. So that, that's how I prefer to do it. The next step is uh, you'll notice that that nav does not act quite the same way as the bootstrap did. I should take a moment here. One of my students uh, made some changes, and then the whole site crashed. Well, if you're right in the middle of making a change, and it's a PHP call, and it crashes, that's a sign that you introduced an error. And in this student's case, uh, the student, she forgot to put a comma there. And once she put it in, everything was working again. All right. The next thing I want to do is get everything set up to do some navigation CSS. And what I'm going to do in order to do that is I'm going to create my own uh, navigation style sheet. So uh, the most logical place to put it would be in the CSS folder of my child theme. Now, if you don't have a CSS folder, you don't have to. You can just put it with all these other files. I find when you're doing child theming, you're going to have a lot of these pages here in a little bit. I think it's best to go ahead and put a CSS sheet inside of, have a folder for all your CSS files. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new file. And because this is web matrix, I get to choose CSS right here. And I'm just going to give it a name of navigation. Click OK. And there's my navigation style sheet. I'm going to zoom in on this. I do not need a body selector because that doesn't make sense if it's a navigation. We need to make a little change here so that we can see if we're able to load this style sheet. So before I do this, let's go ahead and one, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to add it so that when um, we're on a given page, so I'm going to go to the blog page. So make sure you click a link. Now notice there was no link to the home page on this nav bar. So I'm going to the blog itself. So I actually clicked it so you can see right here it says blog. All right, now according to Bootstrap, if I'm using pills, I should have that color surrounding it. But I don't see it in here. So one of the things I'm going to do is figure out, is there a way we can easily target that particular link? So as soon as I go in here, um, I see, and I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit on here, You'll notice I have my UL and list item, 
And it already has a list of classes, and one of which is current page item. So all I need to do is style this. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to click Add a New Style Rule to test it out. I'm going to get rid of everything before that and just leave it as dot current page item. I'm going to try a background color. And um, we'll do one of my favorites, 336699. And immediately you see, wow, I can't even see the text. Not to mention that squared, not rounded. The problem is I don't want to actually apply it there. I want to apply it to the hyperlink inside. Notice there is no class applied to that hyperlink, so I'm just going to do it as a child selector. Excuse me. Click back here, scroll back to the top, and change it so it's current page item A. Then I add the background color. Notice how they're rounded. And I'm just going to go ahead and set a color of white, like so. So I look here. I look up here, that looks about right. So I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it into my navigation.css. So there it is. That looks good. I'm going to save my changes. Now I need to load this page. In order to load it, we're going to need to go to our functions page because it's the functions that will tell WordPress what CSS files to load, what JavaScript files to load. So I'm just going to double click on functions. You might want to pause the video and get the code first. All right, so I'm going to double click on functions and let's take a look at what we're doing. Notice we have this load bootstrap CSS files. I'm going to put a little comment here. I'm going to put load navigation.css. Now, I know that this loading of bootstrap works, so I'm just going to copy that. Why retype it all and risk running an error? So I'm going to paste that in, and instead of NQ style bootstrap min, we're just going to write navigation. And instead of CSS slash bootstrap dot min, we're going to do CSS slash navigation dot CSS. Save our changes. Let me zoom in on that. So this is the code that I just added to load my navigation and let's see if that works. Okay, this should be it. Uh, already one student says it's not working. Well, let's see if it's working for mine because if it's not, well then we have a problem. Houston, so hit refresh. Oh, 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 it works, see, see. Let's test it, let's go to front page. I click front page, yes. Let's go to sample page, okay. So I got it to work. Oh, my bad. I didn't oh, yeah. press blogs. Did you remember to save? No, I didn't press blog. Oh, you never clicked on blog. Okay, great. So once you do that, all right. So at this point, it should work, I hope. I'm already getting pretty close to the end of this, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop this video and uh, publish it. And then the next video, I'm going to start talking about uh, mobile-first design and really working on some CSS and some advanced selectors.